Does this sound familiar? You got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows, you're watching sports highlights on your phone, and you got your neighbor's best friend's login for the good stuff. Ugh. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle. And a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows like Survivor, all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's D-I-R-E-C-T-V dot com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. And after anxiously awaiting the sequel, some Atlanta fans are a little out of this world. Nigel, a runner. No pointer, runner. Stevens, agent. Simon, a runner. Freeman, 713. I am a sentinel. Good morning, sweet world, and welcome to the No Dunks podcast on the Athletic Network. It's Tuesday, January 18th. I'm J.D. Skeets, and alongside me, as always, here in the Classic Factory, Tass Millis. What's up, everybody? What's up, Tassie? We got our Top Shot Hot Boy, Trey Kirby. Hey, yo! Hey, yo! The international man of mystery, taking it to the max, Lee Ellis. Friends. Mm. Mm. And finally, making the magic happen, <laughs> super producer, J.D. Hello. There he is. And here we are. Shout out to the stream team for joining us live right now on YouTube. Subscribe, like, comment, share the show. Guys, big anniversary today. Tass letting us know mere five minutes before we went live. Hey, I think today's our 16th anniversary wow. of this show. Yes, 16 years ago today, Tass, myself, and JD, I guess, got together in JD's old apartment mm -hmm. and Nothing's recorded changed it. Nothing's really, has it? Nothing's changed. <laughs> it's creepy. You need four hands now. That's a lot of hands. That's a lot of hands. 16 years. Yeah. Wow, I've been in this game for years. Wow. It's crazy. You know, that means him an animal. the Kobe Bryant 81 game is a couple of days away here, isn't it? That's true. Exactly like, right, yep. Lily. Was that like episode three or something uh, like that? Maybe two. Yeah. It's something like that. Because we weren't doing it daily. Yeah. Uh, right off the jump. We were doing, uh, I guess, once a week just yeah. to start with. So, yeah, you're right. I think it was maybe the second or third episode. Crazy Kobe stuff. Kobe went for 81 against our Raptors. Oh, and man. then we were forced to talk about <laughs> yeah. it. And what about talk. when you asked Sam Mitchell about that, Tassie? Uh, didn't you ask him about it one time? <laughs> Yeah. He said, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> what are we supposed to do? <laughs> and, you got a chance uh, to ask Kobe about I asked it Kobe too. about that, yeah. yes. Which is he pretty cool. forced him to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, sorry, yes. That was, that was a moment. Uh, email in your NBA questions to us, nodunks at theathletic.com. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, at No Dunks Inc. Uh, fun show here today because we're going to do MLK Day slash NBA Long Weekend winners and losers so we have a lot to talk about i will say right from the start here we're not going to get to everything i know there's going to be a miles bridges fan out there it's going to be pissed off hey maybe we'll mention okay miles maybe bridges. well i just did miles so you can't be pissed off but we won't get to absolutely every big performance or you know every big winning streak from your team maybe or losing streak when we get to losers i'm sorry that's just the way it is we got a 60 to 90 minutes here to talk and i'm 60 well we're probably gonna go 20 minutes maybe 14 years if we're ago being honest uh we'll do 20 minutes on our big road trip and that's the real winner of the weekend lee we missed you mm. i gotta say but the three of us and our buddy Grish, yes, <laughs> not my buddy Grish, not his, ours, mm. uh, we made the trip to Memphis to watch the Bulls play the Grizzlies there uh, yesterday on MLK Day. Turns out it's a long drive from Atlanta. Yeah. 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 Miles of bridges. Yeah. I was uh, scouring for uh, that cheap flight, actually. I, I mean, was. next time we're doing yeah. it, we're flying. Yeah. It's like a 45-minute flight. Yeah. And what, what what type of deals were you getting there? 100 bucks? Three, yeah, well, it's, it's the thing. What I've got to do, right, is buy a one-way to Memphis and then get someone from Memphis to buy a one-way to Atlanta. You might be able to game the system a bit. <laughs> uh, the return flight. Yeah. That's the worst part. That's it. it it's $100 to get there, but it's like 350 returns. Wow. So, uh, anyway. Well, yeah. you would have missed out on the, uh, you know, the journey joy of a, of a long road trip yeah know? one way is fine <laughs> you didn't want to come back the same day I'm like I don't know if I, I want to you know how long did it take Tassie, it was, Tassie was a damn trooper man we a did a long time it was it like a, a six, long it's a basically a six hour drive yeah. it's a five and a half six hour drive we made it longer on the way there 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my, well, a lot of people say it's a one road <laughs> shot to Memphis. I mean, it re- Turns out it's a three road shot to Memphis, but you know, you got to go west at Birmingham, as they say. <laughs> Technically, it is one road. Yeah. I'm not sure why they changed the numbers of the highway all of a sudden. We screwed up on the way there. Wow. Yeah, that was, that was yeah. my fault. Yeah. No, well, I mean, look, it's got to go a little bit to the driver, but also the, uh, you know, the, the pa- I wasn't front seat passenger. Yeah, I yeah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I was yeah. cocky. I was cocky. I, I just don't know why. Why the, the the highway numbers change? I mean, yeah. logic would so say we it wouldn't, got, but who knows? We got to basically Birmingham <laughs> yeah. again on our drive to Memphis, yeah. which is where you go. Yeah, I've been there. And yeah. then, yeah, you're supposed to then really start going a little bit north yeah. as you go west. And we just continued. Ah. We continued a little too far south. Still going west, but yeah, we added about an hour to our oh. commute. And when then, you're in an electric oh, it vehicle. gets better. No, we weren't in an electric. Nah, oh, you weren't. Oh, you didn't take gasoline. the electric. Oh, okay. Oh, can you imagine what we would have oh, been like if yeah. we were in an electric vehicle in that yeah. scenario, having missed it? We were saying the whole time. Oh, I love twenty. <laughs> I love twenty. You love twenty, Lee. The inner twenty's fine. Oh, yeah. 20's great. It's great, right up until Birmingham. But then yeah. you're gonna want your twenty-two once you get there. We also had a great moment when we finally found twenty-two again, getting closer into Memphis. Uh, we saw the east, passed it by. The west was right there, and we had the literal swerving off a highway <laughs> meme. Ooh. Got there. Test yeah. smooth. Move. Best driver I know. Got there. Yeah. Got there. I just wanted you guys to have the electric car experience by adding that 45 to 50, yeah. 50 minute charge. <laughs> right. Slash. I'm, so glad, rather, I'm glad we didn't do that. <laughs> no. So no, rather no, than charge, you just take take the scenic route. Yeah. To get that, but yeah. it was sort of brilliant uh, going the wrong way, going to Memphis, adding at least an hour to our commute. Mm. Because on the way minutes. home, 50 minutes. we flew home. Yeah, right. We took the nice. right way home. So nice. it was uh, easy. Are they still doing road work about an hour and a no. half out? No. Because I know when I've driven out to Alabama, there's always road work out there. And I'm like, well, no. you don't want to run into that when you've got a bit of a tight time limit there. We're on, gonna, our way home, we, the... on our way home, we had some road work. We had some trucks f- flashing each other. It was, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. What's oh. going on? Yeah. Uh, also, we got to say we got a speeding ticket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's fine. That's, that's the way it goes. That's the way we it goes. were trying to make up some time. Yeah. I mean, because uh, we were going to miss the game. It was getting yeah. close. Yeah, yeah, it's all part of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's great, worth it. Great uh, state patrolman, though. A real. Yeah, he's a real friend. Southern lawyer, if we're being honest about it. <laughs> we got all sales a ticket. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Officer it. Morgan. We appreciate you. your cordial. We know nobody likes to get one. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can do a driving course there on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if your internet's a little different in Georgia. <laughs> <That's what he laughs> <said. laughs> anyway. <laughs> Officer Morgan, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Right, good fine. guy, good guy. Uh, so we did get to the game. So let's talk about it and your experience. Uh, all of our first time uh, in Memphis. Have you been? I've been to, to Memphis. Yeah, I've been to a grid, grid, have? grind game. Yeah. Okay, there you yeah. go. So you've been to the grind house, but yeah. uh, I mean, Tess, what did you think of uh, the game itself and and the arena and the fans and all that stuff? Listen, it's just. Uh there's a short window here where you can experience Ja as a young player on the rise. This is just a, it's a special time. Even as a person who's been doing a basketball podcast for 16 years, there is this short period. He's 22 years of age. He is on the rise. This is, There's only one point where you can experience this type of Ja Morant right. and to see it in person, even though it wasn't a particularly amazing Ja Morant game, right. there were special moments where... He did those those couple of layups when he gets into the lane, and we had a great view. Our vantage point was pretty great, just a little bit up, you know, kind of behind the hoop in the corner of the tunnel, ex- yep. pretty much where the exit tunnel is, to have a, a direct line to the key where he's able to, you know, he's going north-south, and then all of a sudden he goes east-west in a matter of, you know, just a milliseconds, and it's an incredible thing to watch from that bat vantage point. He's just so special. What I desire is to see replays of his footwork, you know, when he's going north-south and then he goes east-west, the feet light up, like where his footprints are. That's what I want <laughs> because I think that's what I want to watch. That is, it is so beautiful. And then to see that spin move Woo! in person. It made it worth it because the yes. game, you yeah. know, the Grizzlies, yeah. like, well, we'll get to the Bulls After and, you the know, the disappointing performance. Yeah, it was over much. in a hurry and they, they, they poured it on. But then we got the Steven Adams, Tony yeah. Bradley <laughs> thing, you know, talking about footprints. There was no footprints for Tony Bradley with Adams just carrying him there in the, in the sand. Yeah. But then, yeah, we got the John Moran play, which was what really you're hoping for. And he is on the short list of, like, players in the league that you should, I mean, look, if you've got the money, you should go see them in person. You mm-hmm. should experience that 
It's yep. like a handful of it guys. It. It's just, it's sort of better. It's a different experience seeing them in person. Yeah, it was awesome. I went to bed with like a grin on my face, just <laughs> trying to think, have I ever seen a move like like an ooh and ah move as cool as the jaw 360 layup? Because like you're saying, Tass, we had the perfect angle for that one with the way the lane had split open and he got uh, the finish up to the rim. It looked better from where we were sitting than on the broadcast. No offense, suckers. But it definitely <laughs> did because yeah. I rewatched it, obviously, a million times since then. But... I've got like only one that's even close to it. Like I saw a LeBron game his rookie year. He caught the ball on the sideline and put it behind his back before he like hit the ground. It was super cool back then. But like to see a 360 layup, like yeah. you, you know, you can yeah. see a game winner. You can see a 60 point game, but to see uh, a move that like literally leaves the crowd ooing and eyeing, that felt special to me. So yeah, totally worth uh, worth the price of admission, which for us was a seven hour drive there and a <laughs> yeah. five hour yeah. drive back. It didn't cost uh, us but it was awesome. Yeah. I will tell you, perhaps the most humiliating thing in the world is when your team keeps missing shots and the Grizzlies uh, PA announcer or the, uh, the music just plays, nope. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Every time my man Vooch would go for a shot, brick it, nope. nope. I'm just, come on guys, you're killing me here. Nope. Uh, uh, great. Well, yeah, I, was, I, was, I started watching it. Uh, it was tied there and then the Grizzlies went on like a 16-0 run in the second quarter and sort of, that was it really, wasn't it? I yeah. mean, the Bulls never really got close after that. So you are hoping for that memory memorable moment and you mm -hmm. got it there late there from uh, Jar. so yeah would have been uh, fun to be there wish I was there wish I could have made it but uh, unfortunately I have to wait till March 18 I think he's in Atlanta there you go yeah okay you'll yeah. be down at the fortress oh, hopefully for that yes, one yes I think so for sure um, any other um, you know just random observations from either the game or the experience <laughs> Go ahead, Trey. Uh, from the game, yeah, like you're saying, Skeets, it was the game was over in the fourth quarter. The Bulls made a little fake run to get it to like 15 with a few minutes left. Ja really shut the door, but they put in a, the garbage time lineup eventually. Got a huge John Conchar dunk oh, that yeah. I was happy to see. I thought Jaron Jackson Jr. played a really solid game. Five blocks. He was scoring on the block. I mean, he wasn't scoring a ton, but every time they dumped it down to him, he would get a pretty good shot. He had a huge dunk left-handed. I remember looking up several times during the game. The Grizzlies will put up hustle stats is what it said. And it was like second chance points, offensive rebounds, both offensive rebounds and second chance points. Because sometimes you grab them, you don't make them. <laughs> yeah. Turnovers, points off turnovers, yeah. assists, uh, three-pointers maybe. And the Grizzlies led in every single category for yeah. at least the entire second half. And I was like, well, that seems to make sense because the Bulls couldn't throw a pass across the lane without it getting stolen. It was either Jaron Jackson Jr. or one of the five Kyle Andersons that were out there <laughs> getting their hand on every single ball. All of the bigs for the Grizzlies I thought were awesome. Like Steven Adams was really setting the tone inside. Jaron Jackson Jr., like I said, had a great game. Brandon Clark was solid with his energy whenever he came in. He had a huge dunk in the fourth quarter as well that got the crowd really jazzed up. And Kyle Anderson uh, was great defensively as well. So I thought we saw the perfect uh, grit and grind kind of game from the Grizzlies. It was a smash. It, it, it ended up being a blowout, unfortunately. Yeah, because the hustle stats were with the Grizzlies. And I think... If you're going to be even the slightest a pessimist with the Grizzlies, even though you can really only be an optimist, maybe that's where things could go a little bit haywire in the playoffs because the effort level of the other team will be matched. Mm -hmm. We'll be matching this Grizzlies team that that kicks ass in transition, that just does the dirty work. You know, they're so good offensively uh, on the boards. Maybe that gets matched in the playoffs a little bit, and, and in that transition, uh, the defense won't be. You know, that uh, that won't you know go south in the playoffs but jaron jackson jr was so good to block two two balls in transition like that two shots in transition that doesn't That's happen crazy. Very often. Yeah. uh he was really really impressive on that end and yeah it was good to see him in person uh and to see desmond bain in person oh, yeah. i mean they, him and Clean. him and the, gun, the guns are oh, immaculate I imagine they are. <laughs> yeah yeah the, yeah they are and these, you, you, as you've said skeets the vibes are immaculate they are the vibes were great man the vibes were great in with Memphis. the team someone with the tweeted fans. It. was it the grizzlies i think a team tweeted that the vibes are immaculate i'm not sure if it was them or not but, uh, <laughs> i think they have there. in the past yeah. for sure uh, and it's true it's true i mean you've been to the fedex mm. forum it does i mean you said it the other day task without having ever been there yet you're like it does have a college Mm -hmm. vibe to it i think that's fair it's not a big arena mm -hmm. you know is the concourse isn't that big it's uh fairly dated i guess at this point it's fine it looks guess so yeah it, it, it does the trick but it's like i like how like 
just sort of like on top of each other. Small you and feel. tall is what it felt totally. like. Totally. Sure. I mean, those Grizzlies in the playoffs from the Zach Randolph days, yeah. those games were always oh. a tough, tough place yeah. to win. Yeah. Uh, you know, packed environment. Was it packed there yesterday? Was it, it, was, it pretty was pretty full. Yeah. 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 yeah, I guess so, yeah. So uh, it is It is a it's good a home ad- game for them. Yeah, for it's sure a good home court do. advantage that they have there, especially yeah. when they're winning right now. And I mean, everyone does look like they just really enjoy playing with each other, yeah. uh, watching them. So this is a great surprise run that the Grizzlies have been on. The only thing else I'll add, shout out to the No Dunks fans in attendance. Uh, You know, they were repping pretty strong. I saw a wedgie shirt. I saw a No Dunks (laughs) shirt. uh, And everybody like saying what's up to us. That was really nice of y'all. And then the barbecue nachos (laughs) from Rendezvous. Uh, It came recommended by a couple people on Twitter and lived up to the hype, Lee. Great. I mean, not the healthiest, uh, obviously. Yeah, But some pulled pork cheese nachos. This like sort of sweet but spicy barbecue. Yeah, but see, you're traveling, so. So rules go out the window, oh, okay, Pete. Right. Got to experience. You did you go to Beale Street? Because it's right there. Well, we did not have a lot of time to do right. anything else in Memphis. We did zero walking in me. <laughs> so we did some driving. <laughs> I would say our biggest non-basketball success was Bucky's on the way home. Oh yeah, I love Bucky's. <laughs> Honestly, you hear a lot about like a fast food place or a gas station. You're like, oh, this is the coolest thing ever. And to me, it never lives up to the hype until Bucky's. Yep. You know, I looked it up on the phone. We found the one in Leeds, Alabama. We were going to be pushing it gas-wise to get there. Tass has thrown it into neutral down the hill <laughs> to save the gas so we can put her in because we knew there were 120 wow. filling stations at Bucky's. Literally 120. Wow. Lee, this pumps. was insane. This it was station. massive. We went in. I, we could have been there for an hour just mm-hmm. like walking around the it's store. It's like a damn Walmart, wow. basically, but for cars and gas, <laughs> gas station. Yeah. And they had a cook there making food at 10 p.m. at yeah, night. Yeah, 10 p.m. We had a brisket I sandwich. guess there's a lot of truck and things going through, oh, isn't yeah. it? I mean, Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of truckies and buckies. <laughs> it's, it's, isn't truckies the Charles Barkley uh, statue around there in uh, Leeds, Alabama? Oh, probably, yeah. yeah. You yeah. Have, you you when we you were, were driving, you could have made the... Oh, no, I, I wanted to go this way. Although you're coming home, actually, at yeah. this point. Yeah, yeah we just right. had to get home at that point. Yeah. We had a show in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was a lot of fun. Again, shout out to the No Dunks fans in Memphis, and we will be back to... Uh, yeah, try and experience Beale Street. I guess you got a chance to do that last time. Yeah, yeah last time I was there, I was there. It's right by the arena. Oh, it's right there, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, uh, and it sort of is one of those like it's it's a bit like touristy, but there's sure. so many great uh, uh, you know barbecue and things like that that Memphis right. is known for. Yep. So yeah, great. Okay, what clips did you get up? You got the John Morant 360. Did you put up the Stephen Adams? Tony <laughs> no, Bradley, no, uh, no, no. Everyone had it, but what an awesome moment that was! Hilarious. Tony, what's Tony Bradley? Six eleven, probably two sixty, something like giant. that. And a uh, little bit of a scuffle there at the end of the game. <laughs> Stephen Adams goes into separate, <laughs> then just says, "All right, I'm taking you like a five year old throwing yeah. a tantrum." And he's like, "We're going home right now." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh man, Stephen Adams, what? Because he got a foul on an N one. I think it was from D- uh, Dasumu at mm. one point. Yeah, and it was like one of those ones. It could have been a dangerous play, but Stephen Adams doesn't take offense to anything. He's given him a high five. Stephen Adams was probably like got beaten up by his siblings yeah. like every day of his well, life. Well, he was like the seventeenth in the family that's or something I mean. like that. Yeah. So yeah, uh, what a great guy he is. <laughs> oh, yeah. He had a good game. I, I think that's the best Stephen Adams game I've seen in a long time. <laughs> he was just super energetic, trying to show Billy Donovan, I think, what he used to be able to do. <laughs> maybe, he maybe. Good out there. All right, maybe. well, that's enough on the Grizzlies. We'll, we'll unfortunately touch on the Bulls a little bit later when we get to uh, losers of the long NBA week. But, Lee, let's go to you next. Uh, who's your MLK Day winner? Or, again, you can extend it through the weekend. Uh, well, timing is everything. And uh, Darius Garland, over this last week, may have may have ended the debate as to whether or not he's going to the All-Star game. A hundred percent. I think because you're probably over. right. Well, does Jared Allen go I mean, that's well? the thing. Is it, it's now, is it two calves yeah. or one calf? I mean. Uh, because Darius Garland, uh, especially over the weekend, the Friday, Saturday, and Monday, it was incredible. Uh, yesterday, he was fantastic in the fourth quarter out Kyrie Irving Kyrie Irving there for the uh, Brooklyn Nets with some of his moves there yep. I'm going to go specifically actually to Saturday night against the OKC Thunder in a game the uh, uh, the Cavs were down at halftime in the third quarter they had 13 field goals Cleveland Darius Garland scored five of them and was assisting uh, assisted on the other eight of them in the entire quarter he was incredible he finished with a career high 18 assists in that game they got the win didn't shoot from three all that well but 27 and 18 yesterday had 22 and 6 and on Friday against the Spurs 32 and 8 Eastern Conference Player of the Week he's yep. been the, the the Cavs here have won 6 of their last 7 and he is uh, honestly playing just so incredibly right now his confidence and his swagger 
Is it swag or swagger? His swag, whatever. Do we, yeah, we still use swagger. Yeah. It's anyway. like biopic, you know. It's just word <laughs> why, that's do you look, why do you look in the bag you're always talking about? Well, his <laughs> his bag is so deep right now. He's flinging one-handed passes yeah. on the baseline. He's getting inside. He had an incredible spin move there himself yesterday. I, I said he was out Kyrie and Kyrie. It was just like a Kyrie yeah. Irving. He's got the handles. He gets into the paint. He doesn't make the move. He spins and then reverse layups it off the backboard. He was incredible. This is another good game. The Nets were leading in the fourth quarter. No Kevin Durant, but even still, Darius Garland was uh, amazing. So he right now is getting the attention of the people he needs to get, and that's the yeah. opposing Eastern Conference yeah. coaches. And uh, that is certainly going to add to his strong case already that he's going to be an all-star in a few weeks' time. You, you think he's a lock? I think so. They are up to fourth in the Eastern <laughs> Conference right now. And I know it's a huge jumble uh, yeah. b- between one and eight and nine and ten. Uh, but that's why I think you can s- slow the flow on a Freddie Van Vliet all-star appearance Ooh. lock. Oh, no, no, no. You can lock both of them in. I'm, not, I'm not so sure because the Raptors are only one game above 500. They have to have a winning record if the Cavs can climb here. They're, they're yeah. only one and a half out of the top of the Eastern Conference yeah. playoff picture. They get the Bulls who are shelling themselves on Wednesday night. They could easily move up. And then you kind of have to say to yourself, well, you got to give them two. Right. And either way, Jared Allen's going to get some votes from those Eastern Conference coaches. Deservedly. And, yeah. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Uh, Darius Garland is an absolute lock uh, to me. So there's there's going to be somebody who gets left off, you know, whether it's one of those Celtics who are also sometimes climbing in the standings, whether it's Jalen or Jason, uh, that could take away Freddie Van Vliet's all-star spot. Either way. LaMelo ball. Right. Possibility. Right. The, the Hornets are actually winning a lot of games mm-hmm. here. Sure. But you the know. Cavs are one and a half out of yep. first. What, what a story in the yeah. Eastern Conference. And they, they should have fallen apart so many times this season. We've talked about the injuries. We've talked about just how young they are. They just went on a six-game road trip. And they went 5-1. and one. A young Cavs team should not do that. They should have felt, fallen apart so many times. In that OKC game, this is game six of a road trip. Six games in nine days. They could have easily fallen apart mm-hmm. at half. But yeah, Darius Garland picked them up there uh, in the second half. They beat the Bucks recently. They beat the Jazz recently. They beat the Nets now. Uh, and they're getting the Bulls this week. They're showing the league how great they are. So yes, Eastern Conference coaches have to be watching this mm-hmm. and have to be seeing this. Uh, that was uh, great to watch Garland. Yeah, he's he's a lock because he's up to you know, almost 20 and 8 on uh, a crazy free throw percentage as well. 92. You gotta, you gotta throw <laughs> oh, that yeah. That's going to tip him. Knock him down. I mean, if it comes down to the Elam ending, you want him at the line. Oh, yeah. right. He's 21 years old. It, it's yeah. yeah it's, it's hard not to think about Kyrie in a Cavs jersey when he was when he was younger and, and look at Garland and say, man, yeah. this guy is, is ours for a long time. He ain't going anywhere. Quick Cavs trivia. Okay. Mm. So he went for 27 and 18 assists. Fifth Cavalier to have 25 points and 15 assists. Okay. Name the other four. Okay, LeBron. so LeBron and Kyrie. I'm sorry, he's the sixth Cavalier. There's okay. five guys. Okay. No, Kyrie never did Ooh, it. Oh, he never did LeBron? LeBron did it eight times. So there's four more names. Mark Price? No. Hmm. Wow. Terrell Brandon? Terrell Brandon did, yeah. did it once. Okay. Now, I think you're only going to get one of the other three names. Bob Sura. No. Oh, <laughs> no, but I never think uh, of this guy as a Cav, although he played Kevin there. Kevin Johnson. No. Who do you think? Uh, where do you think of him as... What'd you say? I mean, he bounced bounced around. around. He bounced around. Um, Mo Williams? No, no. Uh, Our buddy, not my buddy, our buddy buddy Ryan Seton (laughs) has a jersey of his as a Cleveland Cavalier. <laughs> because because if, if he saw this Anthony game, he's like, let me no. put it in order. <laughs> Andre Miller, this dream team. Andre Miller's Miller is correct. Oh, oh, yeah. Three right. times. So, and you're not going to get has that jersey? Yes. <laughs> he was only there one season, I think. It was. Oh, maybe two. Know, maybe not a couple. Long, I don't know. Yeah. I, okay, I think funny. if Seth felt like if he embodies Andre Miller on the basketball floor. Oh, yeah, floor, that's true. He does. He's always looking. He does play like him a little bit, yeah. So, Braun, Andre Miller, Troll Brandon, John Johnson, a couple time all-star back in the oh, day. Oh, John and, Johnson. And Bobby Washington. So that's okay. it. But anyways, that was fun. All right. Bobby Those does. are default yeah. players. Bobby. No way. John Johnson. <laughs> Bobby Washington. All right. So Garland, uh, yeah. a big, big winner here of the, the long NBA weekend. Let's go to you uh, next task. I know we talked about the Grizzlies, but you got another one here for us. Oh, the Atlanta Hawks. We're all winners uh, because we don't have to go down there to the fortress again because the last time the Hawks won, we were there. Yeah. In Atlanta, the last time they won at home was November the twenty second. So they were going to need us to go down there and help help <laughs> Did them. Do you win. think the Hawks are going to reach out to us? And yes, say, hey, can you guys get down here. One hundred percent. And 
there also a winner just because of the way they pulled this game out against the Milwaukee Bucks on MLK Day. Memphis and Atlanta, they have to win on MLK Day. Mm -hmm. That should be a rule. They were down 10 with just under 7 left. The exciting part for the Hawks, the guys who pulled this game out. On the defensive end, Onyeka and Kongwu, know this guy's name. Stop calling him double O on the broadcast. Just say the man's <laughs> name. We can say Yanis Tetkumpo. We can say Anyeka Ankangu. Great Nigerian name as well. Uh, he hasn't played a lot in his first two seasons. This is this is season number two. But I say Yanis Tetkumpo because he guarded Yanis really, really well mm -hmm. down the stretch. Yep. He stripped him. He blocked him. Uh, and he and he was just able to physically stay with him, even though he's way smaller. Uh, he was able to uh, to stay down, and yeah, again, he's only played 50 games in his first season, only 10 this season. But there's a reason that they drafted this guy last year when they had Clint Capella on the roster. They can see him as their future starting center. So watching him down the stretch, you've got to be excited if you're a Hawks fan uh, because they have been uh, so horrendous at home and you just haven't seen enough flashes from the young guys and then DeAndre Hunter who has come back as well yeah. uh, who hasn't played a lot yeah in his couple of years here enough anyways but if you remember back to last year first quarter of the season he was their best player in all honesty he was out playing Trey Young at times and late in this game he hit a drive uh, where he was able to you know take the offense upon himself so these are the kind of guys uh, that have to play around Trey Young for them to be successful really really great defensive players uh that can obviously provide some offense so that was great they snapped a 10 game home losing streak the deadline just over three weeks away Ooh, what close. are what are the hawks what are the, how are the hawks gonna tinker here we think that cam reddish deal was a prelude to something else and it sure feels like it still uh, but to see deandre hunter in the starting role uh, it, it just it all it all fits a little bit better when those guys are playing well. So that this is the Hawks team that can go and make some waves in this league. These two guys I think need to be really really solid. So to see them pull it out was great against and the Bucks. And with Onyeka playing down the stretch, John Collins was not because mm. Gallinari was actually uh, <laughs> yeah, you know getting yeah. a chance to get them back in the game. You know you could read into that. You could start to go, whoa, maybe that does make him expendable. Maybe they look to move off Collins in his contract. Uh, we'll yeah, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't do that just yet. I mean, mm -hmm. Gallinari did play well, and yeah. I think when you're desperate for a win, whatever's working, you just ride yeah. in that moment. This was uh, honestly felt like a bit of a playoff win from them last season, where Trey hits the deep three, everyone's contributing. Uh, uh, Kongu, that huge block, he had a massive block against the Knicks too on a Julius Randle dunk on Friday night. I don't know if you saw that one. That was the same thing. Randall's going to smash it and Kongu is right there. So that's where he can really make an impact is blocking shots and keeping guys away from the perimeter. The one on Giannis was huge because mm -hmm. Giannis kind of beat him and yep. he got him from behind there. So the Hawks just had to get a win. It didn't look like it was going to happen uh, and they pulled it out there last night. But yeah, there, there's some... Uh, some. It, it makes a difference when DeAndre Hunter can play and he didn't shoot all that well, no. but he was, uh, he was just good to be out there on the floor. All right, so the Hawks get a much needed uh, mm -hmm. win and uh, winner of the weekend here, long weekend. Trey, what about you? Who you got? Mavs had an ugly loss to the Knicks last week. That snapped their six-game losing streak or their winning streak. So they started another one this weekend, went three for three in four nights. They smacked the Grizzlies on Friday in Memphis, 112-85, to triple-double for Doncic, 27 12 and 10. That's how you bounce back after a disappointing performance. Uh, they followed that up by taking care of business over the week weekend. They beat the Magic on Saturday. Biggest moment from this one was probably uh, Doncic taunting uh, Mo Wagner. <laughs> Mo Wagner got the big and one on him. And Luca says to him, Who the Luke fuck Wagner. are you? <laughs> <laughs> Cry, baby. That's some brutal trash talk, man. Ruthless stuff from the donk. And then on Sunday, another wire to wire win over the Thunder, though the Mavericks did try to give it away. Uh, pretty ugly stuff yeah. from both teams, honestly, in the last couple of minutes of this game. Giddy with a couple of rookie-looking turnovers there to ice things for the Mavericks. But that was, uh, Doncic had another triple-double yesterday against the Thunder. That's his third in five games, giving him 41 for his career. According to the Associated Press, every other Maverick who's ever played for the team combined has 40 triple doubles, and Doncic has 41. Incredible stuff. Nine wins in 10 games for Dallas. They got a tough schedule coming up. They got Toronto, the Suns, the Grizzlies, and then they, then they play at Golden State. Doncic hasn't been playing all that well. He's been contributing other than shooting. He's just been a little bit of a slump, but if he's able to hit some shots here, they keep playing defense and get some wins over these teams who they're chasing in the Western Conference. 
He'll be sauntering into that MVP restaurant. Uh, That's not a guy we've <laughs> talked about as an MVP right. candidate really at all. Seems like he's got a little bit of a run in him right I, now. I was just yeah. going to say, hey, we were in a car together yesterday for 10-plus <laughs> oh, hours oh. with my buddy Grish, <laughs> our buddy Grish. You know the MVP <laughs> race oh, came up. God. And, uh, you know, we were debating with the Kevin Durant you know, injury, and we'll get to that later in the show. Like, does that take him out of the running? You know, who's still there? Is it Giannis? And then... We threw out that idea, like, Luke is going to be sauntering into the restaurant, as you put it, and maybe grabbing a seat. Like, at some point, yeah. he's going to go on this type of run that he's on, and they're going to sustain it, and he's going to get the win. So, How many multi-year bets have you got going after that drive <laughs> yesterday? With no, Grant? that yeah. wasn't a lot. MVP. He wasn't biting. No, he wasn't biting at all. Really? I asked him if this was the best. Uh, weekend in sports because wild card weekend <laughs> wild card weekend known as a great weekend it yep. is, it's like week one of the nba playoffs <laughs> nothing he said wow well the games God. were not very good in the nfl this weekend yeah, sure not a lot of well that's there. even more sort of like uh encouragement then for grish to yeah, at least just shoot it down yeah bets and, and uh yeah anyway, wow. that's true so yes uh luca and the mavs a winner i got some more here that i'll uh throw in we'll call them mini winners if you want we'll try and move through them with some pace and we'll take a break and we'll get to the losers but the miami heat have to be a winner bam out of bio he's back baby and he scored 14 uh he was gone for six weeks yeah and i think i forgot how long it was because the heat continued to play really well yeah and now here they are with with chicago brooklyn milwaukee and philadelphia all losing on monday on mlk day the heat are tied they're, they're tied atop the eastern conference they actually have the most wins yeah. uh if you want to count it that way they improved to 14 and 5 at home uh because they beat the raptors there uh yesterday top three offense top 10 defense again bam was out for six weeks he's back butler's been gone for a good chunk of the season we're debating whether to even make the all-star team has he played enough games we thought well does that go to tyler hero or something like that i just can't believe what spolster has done here with this squad and they have to be taking you know, seriously, as a, as an East contender, when yeah. all healthy, you know they can beat the Bucks. They can hang with the Nets. Um, you know, I know people will say, "Well, yeah, can hit. they got smoked by the Bucks last year." Well, yes, yeah, but different team though now. I exactly you yeah. didn't have Kyle Lowry on that team, yeah. so uh, they're just they're just awesome. And, Top ten uh, defense yeah. without Bam for six weeks just shows how together they right. are. So right. yes, they are an Eastern Conference contender absolutely feels like the eastern conference is opening up a little bit as we'll right. talk about the brooklyn nets i heard the nfl is wide open oh, this year anyone can, anybody win, can the win the super, super bowl, bowl. <laughs> and yeah, the way things are going in the eastern conference of course the miami heat could win it they mm -hmm. could they absolutely could devin booker <laughs> winner of the nba long weekend he played three games okay played on friday in indiana sunday in detroit and then Monday in San Antonio. So all three on the road. Now, those are not amazing teams that I just listed for you. But Booker averaged 37.7 points per game in 33 minutes per game. Shot 53% from the field, 38% from deep, 80% at the line. He added nearly four and a half rebounds and assists. He turned the ball over a total of three times in these three games. Just dominant. I mean, at the 48 yesterday, mm -hmm. he was the leading scorer, and it's his season high. Uh, that's now on, like, uh, you know, I just did that trivia yeah. with you guys not too long ago, 47 points or more this season, so you can throw Booker in there. Just awesome. I'm feeling really good about my sons going back to the finals. <laughs> uh, hot take got buried by your crazy Stockton Damian Lillard take. Uh, but More to come on that. Oh, more uh. to come. I can't wait. But anyway, the Suns, they don't play now until – they just took care of business. Again, these are not great teams they played, but my God, they're a juggernaut. And when Booker plays like that, they're I think they're next one beatable. And they don't play until Thursday night, so they can just chill here for a little bit. Uh, and Booker's being trolled every arena he goes right now by the uh, yeah. by the mascots. Uh, yeah, they're trying to yeah, put him off the free throw. The, the coyote there. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's Same thing in uh, Indiana it was where they had – like a yeah. dinosaur a couple of dinosaurs there and he's taking it all in his stride he realizes he looked like a bit of an asshole the other night so instead he's like all right make fun of me it was worth it but then he's going out there and absolutely cooking the teams on the floor so yeah. that's all that counts really but uh yeah he's looking awesome at the moment yeah and then final one here i want to throw in stanley johnson i did not think i would have this on my list here if you had asked me uh you know heading into the weekend would he be a winner of the weekend when we came back on tuesday he scored 10 of his 15 points in the fourth quarter for the Lakers to get the much-needed 101-95 mm -hmm. win over the Jazz. I say much-needed because LeBron was apologizing to Lakers fans okay. after getting killed by the Nuggets after Magic Johnson was lighting them up. He said, I'm sorry, Laker Nation. Oh, I'm so sorry. And uh, Stanley Johnson, this guy was just re-signed to another 10-day contract. And he was hitting big, timely buckets. He had a jumper late to tie it up. Then he had this nice little move around Gobert. 
And so him and LeBron and Westbrook playing well with the big dunk on Rudy, um, they got the victory. But Stanley Johnson. Playing for his NBA life. Yeah. And he's scrapping it out, obviously, even on the defensive end as well. He was making a difference, I thought, watching that game in the, in the fourth quarter. Uh, and uh, just back to Devin Booker real, real quick. Sure. He played in Detroit, one of those three games. I never think of him as a Michigan guy. Mm. Uh, but that's where he grew up. Uh, he's been all over the place. Went to high school in Mississippi and then played at Kentucky. He's like us. Taking a jaunt in the South. Uh, he's been in every state. We went through four states yesterday. Thank you. Uh, really? really? Wow. Impressive, eh? That is yeah, very so impressive. impressive. Did you do the did you do the holding hand? Was it one of those ones where you like you link up? No, no, no. We drove through. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. We yeah, did yeah, hold yeah. hands most of the time. It's great to see the South. It was great to see the South. Well, the South and the and the Mid South. <laughs> as we learned. Did you notice the time change? What was it like going through like actual the uh you know what's it called the equinox is that it <laughs> something like that <laughs> well you drive you drive through and you're actually going back in time it's crazy it's like uh, you're in a DeLorean thank god, thank god we did because we would have missed the game yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Lost, we're yeah. like we're yeah. lucky that uh, yeah we're coming yeah. from uh Eastern Standard Time to uh, Central there, gaining an hour. Absolutely. And we're lucky that uh that Memphis is close it's the mid south it's a western conference yep. team but mm. they are hosting playoff games because they're going to be a home court advantage team so we're so we driving close. or flying though. we're pretty close <laughs> so i don't know we got to figure it up because okay. the hawks have to pick it up it's true uh, if that's they're going to host some playoff games this well, year we could drive close. to charlotte that's not that far that's right no, that's let's right. do it both <laughs> it's just one road there you go how far is it from charlotte to memphis mm. hey. Maybe 10 <laughs> Nine, ten hours, I suppose. Pick let's, them up. You know what? Let's take a break. <laughs> Fire up Google Maps, figure it out. And uh, when we come back, we'll get to the losers of uh, the long NBA weekend. Yeah, it was a long weekend. And uh, things were a little slow in the Ellis household this morning because it was quite chilly. We even had some snow over the weekend Magical. here. Magical. Which meant a few extra hours in the beds in the morning under the covers there. Uh, <laughs> so the hardest part of waking up this morning was just getting out of that bed because I have a Helix mattress as well. What a brag. Oh, I know. Uh, now, I say it a lot, but about my favorite sponsorships of our show, but I mean it when I say Helix <laughs> is number one on my power <laughs> rankings because I get to experience it for basically eight to ten hours a day, which is great. And uh, that we just before the uh, sponsorship came on board, we were looking for a new mattress. And I said, well, we may as well try this one. And now it's like, oh, my God, absolute steal. A steal, I tell you. You're in uh, bed ten hours a day. I mean... Between me and my wife, yeah, she goes to bed a little bit earlier. She gets up a bit earlier, though, so I don't know. There's a person in your bed yeah. at least 10 hours yeah. a night. Yeah. Okay, I, mean, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and listen, if you want a Helix mattress, you can go online and find out which one suits you best because they have a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Why would you buy a mattress made for someone else? I mean, including your partner, of course. Yeah. Uh, everybody's unique and Helix knows that, so they have several different mattress models to choose from they got your soft your medium your firm mattress is great for cooling you down if you sleep hot mattress is great for spinal alignment to prevent morning aches and pains and even even a helix plus mattress for plus sized sleepers so if you're looking for a mattress take the quiz you order the mattress that's matched to you and the mattress comes right to your door shipped for free you don't even need to go to a mattress store and then you can do an unboxing like Tassie did there <laughs> which was like viral wasn't it Tassie oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yes, yes. Look, it yeah. look it up look it up uh, don't just take my word for it. Helix, number one in John Schumann. No, hang on. Uh, number John one. John Schumann's power rating? Yeah, no, no. Best overall mattress <laughs> of the 2020 uh, and by GQ and Wired magazine. <laughs> Helix has been recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as a go-to solution for improving sleep. So it's got the uh, it's got the stats to back up its claims here. Right. Just go to helix.com slash no dunks. Take their two-minute sleep quiz and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life they have a 10-year warranty and you get to try it out free for a hundred nights risk free and they'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it but no one's given that back after 100 nights i tell you i tell you, you're ordering the second one uh, so what's 100 nights time 10 hours thousand hours you're not giving ten thousand i don't know no ten hundred ten hundred a thousand yep. yeah uh, but you're gonna want one for when you have guests to come over because you don't want the old blow-up mattress anymore you want to say have a helix people will be actually they might stay for too long in that point Ooh, yeah. but anyway uh uh listen helix, helix is offering up to two hundred dollars off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helix.com slash no dunks 
You just made me think of, uh, with your little snafu there by accident saying John Schumann. How much would it cost for Helix to, like, pay John Schumann to put, like, Helix in the power rankings? Ooh. Like, suddenly, like, they're a fourth spot, you know? It's like <laughs> Grizzlies, <laughs> Bucks, you know, whatever. Yeah, Warriors, don't, sleep, <laughs> don't sleep on the, And then it's, you know. and then it's just, oh, or, or I'm just saying, like, in the fifth spot, oh, Helix mattress. Oh, wow. Like, it really wow. blow people's minds, oh, but... Well. For the, every, right, for the yeah. right price. Right? Every man's got a price. I'm sure Shooms could be bought for a mattress. I bet or two. he could. Yeah. I bet he could. Uh, well, our next partner has a product I use every day Athletic Greens. Mm-hmm. I started taking it because A, time is tight in the morning. Now that we're coming to the Classic Factory, you know, I am not in my bed for 10 hours a night like Lee Ellis. I'm uh, five, six max. Ooh, wow. I'm up early planning for this show, so I got to get my Athletic Greens in me. <laughs> B, I wanted to crank up my immune system, mm-hmm. right? Especially as the this weather has year. turned. Yeah, I got a little colder here in the south. And C, I wanted to see what the hype was all about. Well, I've been on Athletic Greens for about a month, and I freaking love it. But I know what you're thinking. What is this stuff? What is Athletic Greens? <laughs> what is this stuff? Yeah. Weird, weird yeah. name. With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, and probiotics to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health. <laughs> oh, I love God, gut health. I'm always thinking about my gut health. <laughs> your gut biome is more important than anything on the outside of your body. Mm. Facts. Your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. But most importantly, gut health. <laughs> no uh, don't take my word for it, though. Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews. What is this? A No Dunks podcast? And it's recommended by professional athletes. It costs less than $3 a day, which is, when you think about it, Lee, that's nothing when you start to think about your investing in your health. Oh, of course. $3 a day. You would, yeah. You'd pay 10 times that. Of course What's you would. What's 10 times 3? <laughs> 10 30. It's like 3,000. <laughs> uh, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially here in flu and cold season. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills or supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you got to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash no dunks. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash no dunks to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. We should have brought those travel packs on the road. <laughs> yeah, especially with the food we were eating on a road yes, trip like that. Yes. My gut health has been, uh, <laughs> has been better. Yeah, so thank we, God for the athletic greens. Yeah, right? to, ma- to match the Browns, we could have brought some of those greens. <laughs> Okay, let's get to Compost. Losers of the long NBA weekend. Trey, why don't you get us started? Because we know, unfortunately, where you're going. Yeah, speaking of Browns, <laughs> <laughs> these guys have been the Browns for the past week. I hate to do it. First loser of the weekend of the season to the Chicago Bulls on a four game losing streak. It started with that loss to the Nets where they gave up 138 points. I was fine with that one. The big three was all playing, yeah. they were clicking. They were going to lose sometimes, but. They played Friday again against the Warriors. Warriors were coming off a blowout as well. No Draymond Green. Zach Levine went out with a little bit of a knee injury pretty early. And the Bulls got blown out again. Gave out 138 points again Mm. on national TV Mm. again. Mm. Oh, tough one. Saturday night, they played hard against those Boston Beantown boys. Billy Donovan said... They played better in that game than they did in some of their wins, which is definitely true, but guess what? They blew it in the fourth quarter. Bulls have been pretty good in clutch situations, but they were not in this one. Four-point lead with a minute and two seconds left. Some bad shots, some bad rebounding. Rob Williams, a bad free-throw shooter, goes to the line, knocks down four of them. And then my guy Vucci gets a wide-open look at three to win it. And he just scraped that front rim. (laughs) Just scraped it a little bit. Oh, boy. And then yesterday, another national TV game in Mm. Memphis. They were out, man. They were outclassed. And they kept hitting Bucci with the nope. (laughs) Two for 13. Looking foolish at times, if I'm being quite honest. They're banged up right now. There's no Levine for these last couple of games. No Lonzo. The problem versus the Grizz, that was a problem because they had no space, no shooting. We talked about it earlier. They had so many turnovers in the paint, just like trying to throw the ball into Vooch. And he would, it would hit his hands, and they would just, like, smack it out of there. And it's gone the other way. Uh, the bigger issue to me, though, is that every one of their athletic players, I think, is hurt right now. DeRozan and Vucevic, they like to walk the ball up. They're kind of plotting guys. Levine's out. Caruso's out. 
Javante Green is out. Derek Jones Jr. is out. And obviously Lonzo. That's like five of the best athletes yeah. in the rotation. The way the Bulls were good at defense in the first half of the season is that they had crazy activity, kind of similar to the Grizzlies, right? Like if you had an open three-pointer, Alex Caruso is flying at you to close things down, and then you got to skip a pass, and Lonzo has great instincts. You get a steal, you're going the other way. They haven't had that at all for a few weeks now, especially, you know, with uh, health and safety protocols. The team now is down to 20th yeah. in defense. They're just playing too slow right now. It's not getting better either. They got Cleveland on Wednesday, Milwaukee on Friday. Caruso's getting close to coming back. Green will be next, and luckily Levine didn't have a serious injury. He should be back pretty soon, but six straight losses is not unreasonable at mm. this point. We're at four. Another two could happen in the East. Like we've said, it's tight right now. Somehow the Bulls are still in first thanks to that winning streak, but they're just two and a half games up on sixth. So great first half of the season. That's what it was for the Bulls last year. They fell apart basically after the trade deadline. This has been their toughest part of the season, and they're playing their worst, and they're banged up. And I think there is a little bit of dog days of the NBA going around right now. We're seeing some weird blowouts all blowouts. around. Yeah. Schedule's going to get easier next week, but it has been ugly. So they need to get a win against either Cleveland or Milwaukee. Yeah. Vooch was trending on Twitter yesterday. Oh. <laughs> it, it, this, is, this is how bad it got. <laughs> Trey Kirby in attendance, like we talked about in Memphis for the Bulls-Grizzlies game. Trey Kirby was yelling, do something! <laughs> he was doing nothing! <laughs> do something! <laughs> I think he had... Heckling I mean, his own team because he was playing that poorly, yeah. Zero points in the first half. Mm. I don't think he played in the fourth quarter. Seven, though. Seven, though, in that third, man. He was, <laughs> yeah, he yeah, was feeling it. Yeah. He was yeah. feeling it. Nope. He was yeah. trending. Well, that have to do with... Uh, yeah, a bad uh, weekend for Vooch all around, with, uh, quite honestly. Djokovic? To, what's yeah. his name? Uh, yeah, is that, that's but, his name. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. yeah, 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 he had he some went comments support, about him, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, but uh, not, not uh, when I say Vooch, I don't mean his name Vucevic. I mean V-O-O-C-H is trending. So That knows you're having a bad day when your nickname is trending like that. But I think it is a credit to the Bulls. You know, they've lost five or six and they still on percentage are the best team in the Eastern Conference so you know they did all that incredibly hard good work and to start the season they can kind of survive a bit of a bump here yeah. like this and, yeah. and you know when they get back because like any team when you're missing a lot of your star players and Caruso it feels like Caruso hasn't played for months it's been a long time yeah December uh, 4th they, they, they miss his um, they miss his sort of hustle I think off the bench yeah. and his intensity that he brings obviously Levine is a, is a huge problem when they don't have his scoring and uh, Lonzo Ball as well they miss him so there's you know reasons to understand this is not just like well they were punching above their weight to start the season it's like it's tough to win when you look at that roster and uh, and it's like you know McKinney and then White and, and DeSumo out there and you're like okay they're shorthanded right now yeah it was ugly it was ugly just watching all that space for the Memphis Grizzlies Vooch Island it can be fun when things are going well, but every Grizzly was on an island out there. Mm. They just were not getting out to those shooters. There was so much space. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes I forget watching on television because it looks like everything is is, is, is so close together. But there, it, it, it's, it's a, a pretty long distance. If you're packing the paint and they're having trouble with pick and roll defense and Vooch ain't getting out there, uh, just to get way out there to yeah. three-point shooters. And, man, there was a lot of space. And I don't think it's a coincidence Caruso has been out for a long time uh, that their defense basically mm -hmm. has matched him. Yeah. They, they're 26th in defense since December 1st when you know Caruso was there a few days later. And uh, that's that was the scary part coming into the season. Was their defense going to be good? If their guys are back, Caruso, I th yeah, I think they should be back. But it's just the national TV thing as Trey was going through. Keep, keep him out of here, man. Like, just let's don't. just stick on League Pass. Let Stacey King cook on the broadcast. We don't need to see this team on national TV until they put together a nice winning streak yeah, again yeah. next week. That yeah. was their best game on national TV yesterday. yesterday. A 13-point loss. <laughs> wow. Darnell Mayberry went through it. Uh, yeah. 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 went through it. 26-point loss to Golden State, 26 to Brooklyn, 42 to Golden State, and then that 13 to Memphis. <laughs> Yikes. Maybe they'll get the NBA TV game uh, if they make the playoffs. <laughs> 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 no okay, I'll take it. I'll I take mean, it. you might want it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Less eyeballs, I guess, on it. Uh, all right. So, yeah, the Bulls, an obvious loser. I'll go next here. The Brooklyn Nets, I think, have to be uh, included in this bunch, too. Now, they lost to the Cavs on Monday, so that's a part of it. They fell to third in the East, but you guys talked about how jumbled it is. But in the game prior, Durant sprained his knee. Brooklyn is saying he's going to be out about four to six weeks uh, to recover that. That's pretty consistent with the grade two sprain there of the MCL. But then we got Kyrie saying, I'm not getting the COVID-19 vaccine. You know, he was asked about it. <laughs> yeah. Now with Durant going to be out, uh, you're still just playing these road games. You cannot 
play in New York and he said quote no I stay rooted in my decision and that's just what it is he said a lot more than that you can go watch the clip if you want to but he's not going to and so unless anything changes in the state of New York or this maybe there's this possibility that they could be paying fines if he plays I don't know what the actual update on that is but right now he is just a road player and Duran is now out. And this is not good for Brooklyn because this is crazy if you think about it. And I saw Pelton break this down. He like crunched the numbers. They, when you get Katie back, if you get Katie back around the All-Star break, yeah. you know, if you're optimistic, okay, let's say that happens. They're going to have 10 remaining road games to have their three superstars play together. 10. And they haven't played, they've only played 10 regular season games together as it is. <laughs> they played one playoff series, you know, against the Bucks. Oh, excuse me, against uh, the Celtics. Um, and that's it. So they played like 15, 16 games together. That's it. A- a- at all. And the part is, like, they can play together, but you do have to figure out who the hell is playing with them mm. and what their roles are. So this is crazy that they're really going to have probably 10, maybe less road games, unless anything changes here, which doesn't sound like it is, Tass. Counterpoint. Okay. They played eight games together last year in the regular season. Yeah. Then Kyrie got hurt. Then James Harden got hurt, hurt, and they almost knocked off the champs. Very, very close. Without a, a guy and a half. I, I don't know. I don't know how to really diagnose this thing. I don't uh, think there's any weird. way they should be the favorites to win the title. I think that's crazy to me. I mean, if Kyrie's only playing half the games, that's a uh, yes. I mean, that's how do you how do you prognosticate that? It's very, very difficult and unprecedented. And as the rules become more strict in Brooklyn. The, the rules are now that you have to be five and up and show your vaccination right. card if you're five and up. So it doesn't seem like things are changing for mm-hmm. Brooklyn, even though it is a few months away and Kyrie is becoming more rooted in his stance <laughs> that he's only playing half the games. Yeah. What do you think about Durant, the injury, and can they weather the storm here? Well, it's obviously a concern. Anytime you hear MCL, ACL, whatever it is, it's like that's one that you don't want to mess with, like it was with he, his Achilles, well, remember? He's I mean, done the MCL before yeah. and then did come back and yeah. kicked ass in the playoffs. So yeah, so I guess the, the good point is that we have seen him really bounce back to the point where he's an MVP candidate again. So mm-hmm. when he gets back, you know he can get back and deliver. But when you hear that four to six weeks, you're like, I, I just hope they don't rush that back. And I don't think he will. I think psychologically, right. Kevin Durant's like, there's no way I'm stepping on the court until I'm 100% feeling great. That's just my own uh, guess there. So, uh, And also, like, when their three stars are playing, <laughs> they're going to be like, we can go into anyone's arena yeah. and, and win a couple of games. Yeah. And they might want that because then Kyrie could play in that game, which is the <laughs> funny part of this whole thing. So, yeah, they're not, I wouldn't think they'd rush him back. No. Even I, if they're falling, slipping yeah. to five or six. Oh, yeah, or something exactly. Like that. When, you, yeah. when you've got Kevin Durant there, you just want him healthy, and then it doesn't really matter who you're matching up against. You're a tough, uh, you're a tough out. So, But they've still got some issues there, of course, in the middle. Uh, they, they look thin. Nick Claxton's been out as well, so they, they've got that to address. But when you've got that offensive firepower of those three together, they're, they're a tough uh, matchup for anybody. Would you like lay money on them to win the title, no, though? No, no way. way. No, even when Durant comes back, uh, he, as good as he is, I still just think they've got a gaping hole there yeah. in the middle yeah. that they're trying to fill with an Aldridge and a Blake Griffin. And we've seen those guys this year a lot look very slow at times. Yeah. So, uh, no, I, I think the Bucks would still be my favorite from the East right now. Any thoughts here on the, the Nets, Kyrie's injury? Kyrie's comments of them just floundering a little bit. Maybe it's a blessing in disguise that Kevin Durant's going to sit out a little bit here because there's been a lot of talk in the past month uh, about the Nets playing Kevin Durant too many minutes when, you know, Kyrie hadn't come back to the team yet. Harden was out. They had a lot of COVID protocol issues as well. So he is playing, you know, 43 minutes with a bunch of role players and having the time of his life. But everybody's like, hey, man, you might get injured. Maybe we should slow down here. So maybe slowing down will be good in the long run. And maybe it gives uh, the Nets a little bit more motivation to go into games and give it their all. They're only four and eight in the month of January. And it usually seems to me that they're just kind of out of it, right? Like they just don't give the full effort. Like they obviously got up to play the Bulls on national TV and smacked them. So yeah. maybe a little bit more motivation here for James Harden to, to keep things going, cement his all-star case and keep the team in the top half of the Eastern Conference. And then Kevin Durant will come back a little bit closer to the playoffs, get in rhythm and have had a little bit of a rest, you know, uh, six weeks of rest. It could work out all right for the Nets, but I don't know. It doesn't feel like there's a favorite in the Eastern Conference right now because the Bucks are struggling as well with Drew Holiday out, and we still don't know what's going on with Brooke Lopez. Yep, it does feel open. Um, uh, I'll just, just jump, jump in for the, the KD is the best player in the world momentum. This kind of slows that down, which oh. stinks. I think this is the longest stretch where we've all sort of said Kevin Durant is the best player in the world. 
I think in his 15 year career, there hasn't been a longer stretch. Really? Yeah. Since the last year's playoffs, even Giannis Antetokounmpo, who went up against him, uh, was saying <laughs> and continues to say he's the best player in the world. Since then, I think unanimously across the board, people have said that. And I think everybody's comfortable saying that. I don't think there's been a longer stretch. Even though he was MVP in 2014, Braun was still looming over him. Yeah. And now, you know, Braun is obviously playing great but I think yeah universally we can all say Kevin Durant is the best player in the world and that's going to slow the momentum down uh, a little bit because it's bronze league until he's gone but Kevin Durant can come back and grab it but I, I think yeah that's that this is this is the time where we, even though he's one of the all-time greats I think this is the longest stretch that we can say that I think people would counter that maybe the playoff stretch there when he's on the Warriors and like obviously racking up finals MVPs and mm. going even toe-to-toe with LeBron Yep. That yeah. could be. Uh, but, you know, like, I guess I'm not convinced that this season he's, like, run away with that, you know, that title. Uh, for me, with for Giannis me. playing, with Jokic playing, with, you know, e- you know, even LeBron playing still the way he plays. Curry. I, yeah, it goes I, on and on. There's I, just so many guys. There. Yeah. But it was, it, I think it was more of a debate with LeBron even in those series. Yeah. <laughs> because LeBron didn't have the better team and yeah. KD did. And now, yeah, I think I think this is the biggest gap that, okay. he, that he's had. Uh, and he's... And he's been making increasing that gap until yeah this weekend really. Well, I, I think he's left the MVP restaurant though. Unfortunately, mm, Bron. Oh, no, KD. Kevin sorry, Durant, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's gonna miss he's gonna miss thirteen to fifteen yeah. games uh, minimum probably. He's already missed six, so you're already, you're getting up to like a quarter of the season, mm. and you don't really have much of a chance, I don't think, to win MVP. Right. No. But uh, I I also think for him he won't. He, that's not what he's chasing no, right no. now. He, he he desperately wants a non Warriors championship. Yep. So he he wants to be healthy and as ready for that as he can be. Let's go to you next. Who do you have for a, a loser of the long NBA week? Uh, NBA referees. Oh. Because uh, look, the taunting every weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The taunting after a dunk tech has gotten out of control. Uh, on Saturday night, it was uh, Phoenix and Detroit, and JD's actually got it here. It's Cade Cunningham, rookie Cade Cunningham, yep. with a beautiful baseline move here. Look at this spin. Almost a bit of a smitty there. Oh. Dunks it, and then just points to Jalen Smith there. That's all. That's all he did. Yeah, maybe he was pointing out Jalen Smith, like the smitty. Maybe this na- this move was named after you, smitty. <laughs> yeah. Now, look at that. It, that's a beautiful move. He might be pointing at his own bench, too. Uh, mm, I mean, that's what he says. I mean, yeah. like... Jalen Smith got caught in the cross point. I think yeah, sort of. Yeah, I, yeah. I sort of think so. Anyway, yeah. that was his second tee. He yeah. got ejected yeah, for that. That's insane. He got ejected. Now then, last night, Russell Westbrook's had a very rough season by his own standards. He's been lit up by Lakers fans in the NBA. Yeah. Had a throwback dunk for the ages here last night on Rudy Gobert. Just oh, punches God. it <laughs> on Rudy. Now, he barely... <laughs> now that might be but, but That was questionable. Yeah. But come on, like, how are, in a moment like that, are you supposed to not feel some sort of visceral emotion uh-huh. like he's not going up to Rudy in his face no. like I'm going to punch him in the face now <laughs> he's, flexing. he's flexing he's maybe saying something talk about like I mean, you know I'm, I'm making an anticlimactic moment like oh there's a dump boost I'm going to give you a tech foul for celebrating for enjoying that moment for expressing yourself <laughs> like Westbrook you know, again, he he has had this is, I think, been the worst season of his career in terms of like the the uh, blame that he's getting, the production, just yeah. the way he's been he's playing. A cold as ice. And uh, and you know he's been getting into to it with people in the media and stuff like that. And he goes out there and throws it down. Let the man express himself. Like, <laughs> how, how can you honestly call a T for that? For him, just like crushing it on Rudy oh my god you know and then just like I mean just roaring I think it's ridiculous now I'm gonna say this (laughs) (laughs) so yeah not letting it go here come on come on this one is kind of a guarantee so for me I agree with you but this one is like going to be a tech okay so this is my this is my proposal to the league (laughs) alright let's okay because they don't want people getting into fights over it right that's why that's what the technical I believe is there It's it's a little thing called you know, be sportsmanlike. Right, but, I guess. but again, come on, let let emotion take over, and that's it. Sure. I would say make it a team tech, not an individual tech. So you still get a T. <laughs> the other team gets the free throw, right? Uh, okay. But then, because uh, Cunningham should not be ejected right, for what he did. Up his exactly. Here. Yeah, okay. Like so, make it a, an unsportsman. You know, if you hang on the rim, that T doesn't go to you. If you get called for a T, that goes to True. the team. I only found that out. No, I can't remember right. what it was last year. Someone from the Wolves dunked. They got a tech and it was like, it's not a personal yeah. tech, it's a team tech. We'll make this the same. 
Okay. Because it's just ridiculous to have Cade Cunningham yep. ejected yeah. for a play. The game was, you know, a blowout anyway. He's been good. And then Westbrook yesterday, I mean, I, I just thought it was absurd <laughs> to get a tech foul for that. Uh, uh, well, what, do you, what do you think about that idea? That's not a bad idea. In that instance, you know, you, you flex, you big dunk, you bark, you flex, whatever. I got, uh, I, team I, tech. I, I'm looking at Ziggy's comment here in the stream yeah. team. It's... <laughs> People have flexed since the 80s. It's not new. <laughs> Let it happen. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I lift a 25-pound dumbbell and I flex. Russell Westbrook <laughs> just dunked on the defensive player of the year. And it, the baseline cam seeing him come hunting that rim going after it and then getting Rudy Gobert. And, and that was yeah, you, even like, that was therapeutic, too. You could, oh, for yeah. sure. Right. But it wasn't even a taunt. It was just a little bit of a home, like, puff the chest out. Yeah. I'm looking in the mirror, feeling great. And that's it. I mean, it wasn't really... That's it. It really wasn't all that much. Uh, yeah, the, the team tech, sure. I I also don't know what team techs are for quite often. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I, even I'm, know they really existed until last year. But uh, You're I, all I, being bad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Team, yeah. team tech, team Team rebound, sure, you can change that. Mm. Is that factual that flexing was invented in the 1980s? <laughs> I mean, Mark McGuire and Jose Canseco invented flexing, I believe, on uh, the Bash Brothers. Bash Bros. Um, I actually think a team tech is perfect. It's very similar like to, like, you know, in the NFL, if you go overboard, they're giving your whole team a penalty. So, like, yeah, give the Jazz one free throw for Westbrook dunking all over Rudy Gobert, screaming in his face and then chest bumping every other player who was out on the court because I think he got a chest bump from every other Laker out there. So it's like, I don't know, 30 seconds of celebration? That's worth one point to me. Uh, Absolutely. We do not want to take these sort of moments out of the game in any way where you have the the guy just dunking on another guy for fear of him like, hang on, what if I react and then I get a T and I cost my team? Like, he's got to be able to do that. And uh, it it was instant too. The ref Yeah, it was quick. Like, quick. oh man, come on. So. And, and LeBron coming over to him. This, uh, like, regardless of the tech, this was a good Lakers moment. LeBron, point guard of the team, coming over to the other guy, Russell Westbrook, mm-hmm. uh, and yeah, it was a it was a bonder right there. You don't see LeBron <laughs> get. You don't see Are you LeBron saying this could be a TSN turning point oh, yeah. for the Lakers season? <laughs> this is a Tony Parker. This well, is a this, TP right here. It may have been for Frank Vogel because there was a report out from our Sam Amick here uh, in the Athletic today that he was nearly fired after their last loss. And he remains on the hot seat. So uh, that's a huge. Wow. Huge I actually rib. didn't even see that. Yeah, it only just came out, I think, maybe just before we just went on air. Just across the news wire, yeah, is it? So wow. uh, Frank Vogel would have loved it. So Vogel would have been like, I'll take that tech. Yeah, for Save course. Save my job. Give me the tech. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, good one. I mean, another huge dunk, too, just to slip it in there because you're talking big dunks. Kyle Kuzma. Was oh, yeah. A monster. Oh, yeah. Over in B. There was some good highlights uh, this long NBA weekend. Of all the guys to not get a taunting tech, Kyle Kuzma. Yeah, you think so. Buddy. <laughs> yeah. Guy loves taunting. <laughs> yeah. It's a good point. Uh, Tash, take us home here. Who is your uh, loser of the long NBA weekend? Another dunk oh, okay. created mine. Uh, Scotty Barnes, huge dunk on the break for the Raps. Oh, yeah. A oh, beauty. Yeah. And uh, my loser of the weekend goes to Caleb Martin, who touched Barnes back yeah. on his mm, way always, up. Always dangerous. Don't always dangerous. touch Barnes. <laughs> Don't touch him. He's we'll r- get r- Salino on you. <laughs> Oh boy, <laughs> that's a that's a that's a upstate New York joke for you right there, Salino and Barnes, your injury lawyers. Uh, that's what that was probably one of the more enjoyable things driving through the South is seeing all the injury lawyer. Billboards. Yeah, we had some good names. Do you remember any? Oh, Morris Bart. Morris How many Bart. calls? One call, oh, y'all. Oh, I love those guys. He's got the name Morris in a crash. Bart. Call John all those Nash. Guys look the fucking same. I'm convinced of one guy in every state. Get oh. hit, call Neil Flint. Yeah. <laughs> they love it. They're like, yeah, you've been in a crash? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give me a call. Give me all that money. I love it. Um, they just put it into billboards. Oh, I know. I Morris Bart. That was one name <laughs> Morris Bart. Trey had to add to his <laughs> great names. <laughs> good yeah. names, yeah. Because it, it's... What's what's his billboard going to say? I'm trying to think. Who? Morris Bart. Like, uh, uh, one call. Oh, know. that was it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. 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 Okay, well, right. he had several. Right. Yeah. yeah. I want to get up on that billboard and put a comma after Morris because I'm 
prefer is <laughs> Bart Morris. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they Wait, just screwed up. You think his up. name is Bart <laughs> Morris? <laughs> not Morris well, Bart. <laughs> yeah. Well, Morris is a last name. It's not a first name. Morris Bart. It's Bart Morris. Uh, but we also... Back we to usually Martin Caleb. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Back to Barnes and Salito. No, usually, as you said, it, it's men. But we have also a Mama Justice. Oh, we did certain, see Mama Justice. Wow. That's, what, yeah, oh, that's Mama, a good one. Mama Justice. <laughs> Don't know what her name is. Doesn't matter. Maybe uh, her name is mama justice <laughs> she changed justice it? mama <laughs> justice mama right totally anyways don't touch scotty caleb yeah. I, I, it was you know you always see those things happen and scotty yeah. didn't overreact whatsoever no. three guys went into the crowd uh martin barnes and tyler hero was there and he yeah totally played it off and he uh, he wasn't injured whatsoever but it's very scary yeah just let him dunk the thing because because Caleb was from behind. I had flashbacks of Clay Thompson, you know, getting hit from Danny Green in the finals, which is different because it is the finals and you kind of have to go play for it. The ball, yes, yeah. yes. It's, yeah. it's tough. You, want, you don't want your defender to ever give up on the play, but as we've talked a million times so before, scary. the tiniest touch when a guy's airborne can, you know, end disastrous. So they went into sort of, yeah. press row there yeah. and, and into the crowd, and somebody could have easily been injured, any of those guys. <laughs> but obviously, Scotty Barnes, don't touch Scotty. Don't touch <laughs> Scotty. Scotty too hotty. Okay, those are our winners and losers of, again, the long NBA weekend, you know, slash MLK day there. Let's hear from you guys. I know you're dropping your suggestions in the stream team. Let us know in the YouTube comments. Tweet at us at No Dunk Sink. We're going to take one more break when we come back. Tweet of the night, pick them results, and a little bit more. New year, new eggs. <laughs> the new you doesn't do cholesterol in their omelets. The new you doesn't contribute to the egg industry's pollution impact on the world. The new you wants a breakfast that does good and actually tastes good. That's where our next sponsor, Just Egg, comes in. Just Egg is a cholesterol-free, plant-based egg that will give you the most decadent quiches of your life. You're looking for a decadent quiche? Uh, the fluffiest scrambles and easiest egg sandwiches of all time. Wow. It has about the same protein as a chicken egg and less saturated fat. Plus, Just Egg is packed with cholesterol-lowering polyunsaturated fat. Chicken eggs wish they were this healthy. Oh, and because Just Egg comes from plants, you're also helping to save our planet. So that's nice if you're into the whole saving the environment yeah. thing. It's so easy. <laughs> Just comes out of the squirt bottle, directly into the pan. No more messing, of, uh, cracking of eggs, which I suck at. Oh, I've got oh, I hate uh, a shell. I got hate really shell, good yeah. in the pandemic at cracking eggs. Really? I used to be horrible. Just <laughs> You're not a big egg guy. I'm a I big egg guy, yeah. and now I feel like I've mastered it. So now, like, oh, what are you now I've do? just got just egg and it comes out of a. <laughs> yeah, bottle. exactly. That's a squirt. We've had squirts two two shows in a row. Uh, some squirt talk. Uh, no eggs on in the previous squirt talk. Anyway, uh, yeah, and, and my compost actually will benefit from the lack of eggshells oh, really? because I love what eggs do for my compost however they don't break down uh, like, and you, you uh, get yeah. too many in there yeah and i often I, I often crush them with my bare hand <laughs> i crush my eggshells with my bare hand what a manly man i am <laughs> uh, and i come out with little nicks and scrapes so just egg will save me from those <laughs> Because I have to crush them because they're what? not decomposing on their own. So you so, pick it up and just. <laughs> 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 it hurts. Every day, every day I'm yelling to the heavens about my eggs. Oh, I see a little, a little tender blue eggshell that must have come from a very cute chicken. I'll crush that. <laughs> ah! Ah! Show off the new cholesterol-free you by buying a bottle of Just Egg today and doing the planet a solid all at the same time. Just Egg. Really good eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, it's called, I almost got through. It's called just egg, but it's not actually eggs. No, it's a plant-based egg. <laughs> that's ballsy, I gotta say. That's it's, it's like that's it's ballsy. Like, it's like milk. Cows are dumb. They should have patented the word milk in the first place, <laughs> but they didn't. They didn't, and now everyone can use the word milk. Chickens are dumber. Like Chickens are even dumber. <laughs> they should have patented the word egg. Yeah. That's yeah, the thing. That's a great point. Yeah. Chickens okay, are dumber I see what than you're cows. I see what Just you're egg. <laughs> but not. <laughs> but not. That's the incredible part. Uh, All right. Got a sore leg? Call Just, just Egg. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting to see billboards. Yeah. And just Egg. <laughs> have you been injured cracking eggshells <laughs> in your compost? <laughs> Called Just Egg. <laughs> 
All right. Okay, okay. What do you let's continue the breakfast portion of the ad reads. <laughs> Last night, we were driving back from Memphis. Listen to a song called Carol Brown by Flight of the Concords, a very funny song about Jermaine's ex-girlfriends organizing into a choir and then complaining about him. Yep. There's a line in this song that I thought was perfect for a Magic Spoon ad read. The choir of ex-girlfriends sing, He doesn't cook or clean. He's not good boyfriend material. Jermaine responds, We can eat cereal. (laughs) (laughs) And you can eat cereal too. And not feel guilty about it thanks to Magic Spoon. Let's play the hits. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. Boom. Only 140 calories per serving. Smoking. Keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb respect. And, of course, you can build your own custom bundle with flavors like cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, cinnamon, cookies and cream, and maple waffle flavors. If you're like Jermaine and you want to eat cereal, go to magicspoon.com slash nodunks to grab a custom bundle of cereal and try it today. Be sure to use our promo code. You guys know what it is? No dunks. It's no dunks. <laughs> use it at checkout to save $5 off your order. Magic Spoon, of course, is backed with 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash no dunks. Use the code no dunks to save $5. All right, let's get to Tweet of the Night. Mm. Tweet of the night. Wow. Tweet of the night, Lily. What do you got? You got a prop here. I have got a prop here, actually. Uh, The tweet comes in from Chris Herring, uh, Herring NBA. Yep. Because uh, this came in yesterday. Blood in the Garden, the flagrant history of the 90s New York Knicks is officially on sale tomorrow, which is today. If you don't pre-order, I'm finding you and committing a hard foul. (laughs) Now, I have been fortunate enough to have read this book already. And I can tell you, it is awesome. It is so awesome. In fact, Chris is going to come on the show and talk about it with us uh, tomorrow. So uh, I really can't wait to uh, talk to him about it because if you're a 90s basketball fan, even if you're not a 90s basketball fan, you'll learn so much about just how impactful those Knicks teams were, especially at the start of the decade there with Pat Riley. And then when he moved on, I won't give it away too much, of course, but uh, (laughs) really enjoyable read. Uh, Lots of incredible stories and anecdotes in there. It's going to be uh, a blast talking to Chris about it. Okay, so there you go. You've got, what, less than 24 hours to go get this book and read it yep. before we talk to Chris Herring here on the podcast yeah. tomorrow morning. Yep. Very excited about that. Did you fly through that, Lee? I uh, can just see you ripping through so, that. So it was funny. Talk about flying through. I actually was reading it on the flight from uh, Atlanta to Toronto. I yeah. was so engrossed by it. <laughs> I didn't even realize the like the plane landed and I'm still reading. And I was like, oh, my God, I haven't like raised my uh, the, 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 the tables in front of me and oh things like God. that. I know. I was like... Like, That's oh, not wow. on you. That's not on you. Well, yeah, I mean, the flight attendant did come through and sort of say, uh, that, but for some reason, <laughs> like, I, sorry, I, I'm reading. I re-lowered it and uh, <laughs> and I was reading, and then I was like, oh man, I shouldn't do that. It's a, a oh, felony. That's on you. That's on you. <laughs> <laughs> <A felony. laughs> but uh, so many great stories there, like right. I say about just how tough the Knicks were, how rough they were, and uh, how the league sort of maybe changed some of the rules because of their uh, roughhouse tactics. Sure, but really good stuff. Uh, you know, just to really drive home why you should buy this book, I haven't read the entire thing yet, but within the first three or four pages, there is a story of Xavier McDaniels <laughs> walking around the locker room <laughs> fully erect with his towel <laughs> hanging off his member. I believe I am, uh, you know, sort of paraphrasing Sarah's <laughs> words here. Three pages in! Yeah. A story like yeah, that. Yeah. So you know you're in uh, for a good book there and a good read. So uh, Yeah, I had Xavier McDaniel on Poppin' Packs. Didn't ask him about that. Oh. Hey, uh, <laughs> Poppin' uh, Pop pants. <laughs> Poppin' towels. <laughs> All right, Poppin so towels. Chris Herring, you're going to join us on tomorrow's podcast uh, to talk about his book, and we'll talk about the NBA with him and, and a whole lot more. Really looking forward to, what, to that. Excuse me. All right, pick them results. Was this Friday night's game? Mm -hmm. Okay, going way back in time here. It was the Raptors-Pistons game. Raptors were favored by 7.5 in Detroit. We sat here and said, ugh, big line, especially considering Dwayne Casey never loses, it feels like, to the Raptors. Didn't take my own advice. I shared that (laughs) stat with everyone, you know, that fact, I guess. I still took Toronto, and so did Trey, and, well, they lost. They straight up lost, like we basically said they would. 
good call by Task, good call by Lee there to uh, take the Pistons and, and the cover there. So you guys are all tied at four and six in the month of January. I'm seven and three, so I'm a couple games clear, but uh, what's the big game tonight? Two games in the association That's it? tonight. Only oh, two Thank God we're talking games. to Chris Herring tomorrow. Right. Yeah. And uh, the New York Knicks hosting one of those games. A two and a half point dog against the Minnesota Timberwolves coming off a game where they allowed 38 to Miles Bridges. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Sad. We sad. <laughs> we we were going to connect. Yeah. yeah. A bridge from the beginning of the show <laughs> to the end of the show. Miles dropped 38, which was great to watch. Watch. Anyways, the Knicks at home. So you guys don't have a lot of faith in the Knicks. I understand that. Watching them lose to the Charlotte Hornets at home on MLK Day. So the three of you rolling with the Wolves. As Trey said, uh, there's a lot of backwards things happening in the NBA right now. So I'm taking the Knicks. Okay. Okay. Lee, why are you going Minnesota? Uh, yeah. It's a tight one. Uh, the Wolves have been playing better the Knicks have been better at home actually too recently apart from yesterday's game uh, just one thing about the Raptors how do they then lose that game and go and beat Milwaukee in Milwaukee I know well they own the Bucks. <laughs> how does the Pistons the own Pistons the Raptors own the Raptors, the Raptors and the Raptors own the Bucks. so let's thing. say the Raptors and the Pistons met in the playoffs they would probably lose but if the Raptors play the Bucks, they'd probably win is that what you're saying yeah, exactly <laughs> what I'm saying it's all topsy-turvy right now it's crazy man it's crazy uh, guys gotta call it there we got to get ready for Chris Herring tomorrow. Join us tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern live here on YouTube. Email in your NBA questions to nodunksattheathletic.com. You can tweet them in at nodunksinc. Grab yourself an athletic subscription. Go to theathletic.com slash nodunks so they know that we sent you. And again, yeah, really looking forward to Chris Herring joining us on the show tomorrow. Only two games. Oh, we can really focus on these games tonight. Absolutely. It's good. It's good. You know, Locked, I mean, there was almost in. too many games on yesterday. Mm-hmm. You know, And then you got football going on. Monday night football playoff game? What the hell did that, that start? I don't know. What about the fairness? <laughs> yeah, that's about? not fair. That's not fair. The team has to travel. Quick turnaround. <laughs> Just Very like us quick. in Memphis. <laughs> that's right. That's right. All right, guys. So we'll see you tomorrow live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Until then, Clipper Bros. You heard it here first. Have a great time. Turn up. Love you guys. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. And remember, I just realized I should love Just Egg a lot because it's made of beans. And I love beans and an egg. Is it's it? made of mung beans. Mung beans? We were yeah. talking about mung <laughs> beans. the number one ingredient. Wow. All right. Yeah. Brace your mung beans, people. <laughs>